Hi, my name is Jeffrey Dawson, and today we'll be talking to you about um, Lingvia, which is um, a cyanobacteria. So, it is of the kingdom plantae, it's one of the most primitive organisms known to exist as of our current knowledge of uh, life history on Earth. Uh, phylum cyanobacteria, as previously stated. And this should be a little bit of a throwback because we haven't talked about cyanobacteria in a little bit, but um, here we are. <laughs> it's the class uh, cyanophyce, order Oscillatorialis, um, and then the family Oscillatorialis, and then obviously the genus Lindia is what I'm here to discuss today. Uh, Algebase.com states that there is about 230 known species as of when this presentation was made, which was two weeks ago. Uh, history, as previously stated, cyanobacteria is one of the primitive, like the most primitive um, phylum on the planet. Um, they rose about 3.6 billion years ago, uh, as to our current understanding. They are prokaryotic, which means that they lack a nucleus and a lot of um, organelles that a lot of eukaryotic cells have, which are um, things such as mitochondria. And then they reproduce asexually via a process called binary fission, which is essentially uh, cell division. Um, they are they range generally worldwide in temperate and tropical waters, and they are very common um, due to their low um, low energy or efficient um, re uh, reproduction life histories. And then um, the textbook that we were given for this class. Hawaiian reef plants states that there are two uh, species present in Hawaii, which are Lingvia majuscula and then uh, Lingvia sultana. So they are entirely filamentous, which means that they consist of two parts a trichome of cells, which is like an arrangement of cells in a row, and then they're covered by a sheet. And um, you can see there's a laser, yep. <laughs> so this is the trichome, and then this outer cover is the sheet right there. So they are um, kind of hazardous, they're known to cause something called uh, seaweed dermatitis, or more commonly known as swimmer's itch, because they produce different types of neurotoxins, such as entelotoxins. Um, and this may only cause minor issues in humans, but they can cause a lot larger issues in smaller organisms, such as fish. They can actually be fatal to some smaller species, which is why it's such a problem. It's also incredibly invasive. I did a study at one of the beach, um, and it um, was everywhere, really, and that posed somewhat of a problem. And this is also a product of it being incredibly hardy to wave movement, salinity, changes in different um, water conditions. So I chose to compare Lingvia to Anabena, which is another cyanobacteria. They're both uh, filamentous, and they both produce neurotoxins. So, ling but Lingvia majuscula is the main uh, main species here in Hawaii, and it's a lot larger than Anabina is. Um, so, yeah, they both are filamentous. Anabina is more free living than Lingvia is. Um, Lingvia generally is anchored by a holdfast, while Anabina uh, Anabina is generally somewhere swimming around in the water, not swimming, but like you know, just free living. And um, anabina has acinetes and heterocysts, which, and, or if you don't know, acinetes are like vegetative cells that we produce eventually, and heterocysts fix nitrogen. While uh, lingvia does not contain any specialized cell. And yeah, these are my references. The um, ones right here are photos. And then the rest of them are where I got my information from. 